in the court of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu he came an individual presented himself and he made a request he put forward a question that O Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if a person if a man commits a sin commits a sin then what, what happens after that Allah Azzabi sallallahu alayhi wa stated that that sin gets recorded. Now, what do we consider or take as a sin? We say that a sin is that action which is defined, in other words, as the fire of hell. Concludes with the fire of hell. That any type of sin, that any action which is the disobedience of Allah... If an individual commits any sin, then Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it will be recorded. And no power of the world can wipe that record. That's it. It's permanent. And one place that sin can be atoned for, and that is the fire of Jahannam. Hellfire. And what are we? We are the collection of sins. Us people. Allah Ta'ala made us human beings. And human beings are capable at any time... Due to the nafs, due to the desires, the desires incline us towards sin. Always shaitan, the wretched shaitan, he injects whispers into our ears that you should disobey Allah. And these are two uh, big, you could say, powers, superpowers, who are working with Allah's permission that they want to deviate man and take mankind to Jahannam Halfa. So my brothers, let's think, for me and you, what a dangerous life we have. And our condition is so delicate, that whether we're in the masjid, if we're in the masjid, we're saved. As soon as we leave the doors of the masjid, then we get trapped. We get trapped. Rather, even in the masjid, a man gets trapped, and that's where the situation gets bad and... Um, today after Asr after praying Asr I was departing from this door and there was a quarrel taking place between two brothers I didn't listen I departed and they were good pious people they just prayed Salah and they were red cross they were cross and they were angry may Allah Ta'ala have mercy and that at that time is the influence of shaitan where he takes a person from where to where he just prayed Salah remembered Allah did Tasbih Asr Salah and can anyone think that good people, pious people, but it occurred. And not just this, even I could do this, you could do this. This is our, you could say, characteristic of, of going towards sin or doing wrong. What's the conclusion? And our iman tells us, this is our I belief, if we don't have iman, then we are not Muslim. And our iman tells us that there's jahannam, hellfire, and jannah, hell, uh, paradise. Isn't this the case? Yes. So look at our situation now, if you tell me. And this hadith are presented that it's recorded, the sin is recorded. So what happens after that? All the sins that we've committed prior, are they recorded or not? Will Allah Ta'ala not see? And will Allah Ta'ala not know? Will they not be presented to Allah? What will be the result? Guna, sin, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has kept the account of every sin, whether it's the sin from the hand, from the finger, from the tongue, from the ears, from your feet, by looking with your eyes. There is no action that you can say is away or detached from sin. And what is the adab, the punishment? Extreme. And how qareeb, how close is death? Closer than we can ever imagine. So what should we do? What should we do? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Rabb, who we have iman in, our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabbul Alameen. 
Allah is Rabbul Alameen. He is the Rabb of the whole Alam, of the whole universe. And we are the Ummati of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Rahmatul Lil Alameen. So we have two Rahma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are between both. So how can we not be saved? The question does arise. No, will Allah ta'ala's rahmah leave us in the cold or no, will Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa leave us in the cold? So we don't need to be upset. No need for sadness. I've told you the condition, the situation, our position. This is the position. No individual human being apart from the Prophet of Allah can claim that I can never sin. No one can claim this. No one can give this da'wah. That I will not sin. So the situation is just this, what I've said to you, that we are between two rahmas, you could say two pillars of rahmah, isn't it? Say subhanallah, subhanallah. So forget about jahannam, what can jahannam do? There's no danger, if only we become alert and pull ourselves together. If we hear the answer of the Prophet ﷺ, rahmatullah al then our encouragement levels will shoot to the sky. I will say that this is such a good piece of news, massive piece of good news for us, that the human being who is feeling hopeless will suddenly flip. We commit one sin, two sin, three sin, and sins pile up. The gap between the heavens and the earth fills up with sins. And then we think, oh, I'm into Jahannam. I'm destined for hell, and I'll go into the adab of the qabr. My situation is such, we say to ourselves. But Rasulullah, the greatest personality who stated this, said that if you sin, if we sin, a person sins, then it will be recorded. And obviously this sahabi was asking this question, he was representing the Ummah as. So then, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the sin will be recorded, he became cold, cool. He said, if it's recorded, then after that what will happen? If that individual, now he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this sahabi, that if that individual says to his Rabb, to Allah, that Allah, I committed a sin, can you please forgive me? Then what will happen? Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the sin will be wiped away. Subhanallah. Very quickly, that sin which will take us to the most bottom pit of hell. And the person will be thrown there to burn. So this is the true genuine effect of the Qur'an. That when a sin is burnt, because a mu'min will go to Jannah eventually, ultimately. So Allah, will pray, Allah has prepared Jannah and Jahannam purifies the sins. Because the only the pure can go to Jannah. No impure person can go to Jannah. So if there are sins stuck to our body, then we are impure. No angel comes near to us. We think it's a minor sin. Oh, well, he said this. I didn't say more than that. But what did I say? I didn't know what I said. I'm not even aware. And his life is destroyed, that person's life. Who, who rejects sins. No angel of mercy will come to that person. Because this is how quick the reaction is. When a person sins, or if he atones for his sins, so quickly a person can go onto the path of, of destruction or goodness. So why don't we accept this and bring ourselves around? We are so foolish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared subhanallah. As I said that we are between rahmas, two rahmas that we've committed a sin. It's been recorded. So should we now wait? The, oh, I will wait until I go to hellfire. That will be, that purifies my sins. And that's the only way. No. So either we have planned that fair enough, carry on sinning. I'll go to Jahannam. And then we'll see what happens there. And I'll be burnt and punished and I'll get dragged out. Ultimately one day, all oh, those people with understanding and knowledge and wisdom, they listen to the hadith. So what should we do if we commit a sin? We should ask Allah for forgiveness. And who? From our Rabb. And which Rabb? Allah Ta'ala says, I'm waiting for you. I've been waiting for you, subhanAllah. That you are crying on your sins. And Allah Ta'ala says, I'm waiting for you. That you ask me for forgiveness. So now look at our reality, me, you, where we sat in the masjid with the friends of Allah, with the alims from the pious elders, we've heard these words and we've got a bit of understanding and wisdom Allah Ta'ala has given us this system and delivered us to his home, to the masjid and give us the tawfiq to pray salah. It's no great achievement on our part. It's no great achievement on our part. So why do we delay? If I've committed a sin, Allah Ta'ala said, I've made you human beings. You are prone to sin. Just do one action. If you looked at a woman and she saw you, and you're committing the sin, there is passion, there is nafs, there is lust, everything is present, and everything, a person becomes blind at that time, that he sees the woman, the girl, he goes forward, and the girl comes forward, the woman comes forward, they see the opportunity and they do zina, destruction. And what's the punishment for zina? That the earth and the heavens, they shake. The earth and the heavens shake when zina, adultery, fornication takes place. And today, 
in this day and age, forget it. There are so many forms and methods and ways of zina. Zina is so close to every individual. It's in our pocket before we used to hear. Now zina is in the pocket within a second. It doesn't take a second for a person to become a zani nowadays, an adulterer. It's so close. Allah Ta'ala has, look, everything's in Allah's hands and a person does zina goes beyond that physically because the path is open. It's there. So why does a person then cry? Allah says, come to me, your Rabb, ask me for forgiveness, I will forgive you. Why don't we have yaqeen on this point? Yeah, okay, I've committed the sin. But then, Allah Ta'ala says that a person becomes so hopeless, lacking of hope that I've committed a sin. How will I be forgiven? It's too hard. How can I go to the masjid? Oh, I've sinned. Okay, let's sin again. Oh, I'm a waster now. What's the point? Never say this. Never think this. Look at the story. Yes, listen to the next phase. Don't wait that I've committed a sin now and I'm the worst now. I've done zina. I'm the worst of people and now the stamp of the sinner is on my head. What's the point of me praying salah now? And shaitan makes that person feel so hopeless and downtrodden. He drags him to the ground. And the person thinks, I can't be saved now. Oh, wait, he says, Allah, if I ask for forgiveness, will you forgive me? Yes, Allah says, I will forgive you. And this is okay. Wait, and then the sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah Sallam. So he'll be forgiven if he asks for forgiveness? Yes. Then he said, if he commits the sin again, and he asked for forgiveness. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi said that if he does the sin again, then the re- the record of the sin will be made again. So if he does zina, then he should do another action after that, which is ask for forgiveness. And he'll be forgiven. If he commits the sin again, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alaihi said if he sins again, then the sin will be recorded again. And if he says again that Allah forgive me, then Rasulullah sallallahu replied that he will be forgiven again. Sin will be wiped away again. So rather than being hopeless and feeling totally at loss, then there's a solution. If you've sinned, if I sin, say, oh, forget it. Forget the sin. Allah asks for forgiveness. Allah, I've made a mistake. Allah Ta'ala, I've made an extreme mistake. You'll be totally pure and clean and you'll become a good person. Pious. You don't need for anybody to comment on you or criticize. If Allah Rabbul Alameen crit- uh, forgives, then why do you worry about other people's comments? You have to give the accounts to Allah or other people. If people say, oh, you're a thief and I've seen you, thief, I've seen you steal. Love that person. Say, Allah who has seen this has testified that I have wiped away your sin. So forget about you. You are wasting your own time and you're trying to waste mine. So by telling me this, you are wasting your own time. I'm forgiven. Allah Ta'ala has forgiven me. Subhanallah. So how great a point this is that we've learned today. Then Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said that listen, you keep on repeating by sin, then what will happen? Then if I ask for forgiveness, what will happen? Rasulullah sallallahu said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't tire forgiving. You will get tired of asking for forgiveness, but Allah will not tire forgiving the people. We are human beings like this. This is our shan of this ummah. So brothers, where there is such a big cure that every moment, even if the sin takes place, Allah Ta'ala says, I will forgive you every second. We have the key to the padlock. We have the cure. We have the diamond, the pearl. Then I consider that no man or woman should ever be going towards Jahannam. And Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, how long is this door of forgiveness open for? It will not slam shut. No. As long as Qiyamah does not arrive, Allah will keep the doors of forgiveness open. Subhanallah. Fully open. Fully open. Just one thing we need to grab hold of is that with our Rabb we need to maintain a link. Sin, ask for forgiveness. Sin, ask for forgiveness. Sin, ask for forgiveness. And at the type of sin, keep three things in front of you. Yes, remember that when you ask him for forgiveness, there are three things that are there. When we start this, then definitely three things will occur. Number one, first and foremost, look here, this is very important and essential, is regret. When we sin, we need to have the feel or feeling of remorse, regret. For example, you've seen that somebody pickpocket somebody else. He had a mobile, I put my hand in the pocket and took his phone and he saw. Or even if he didn't see. He's seen that, oh, that he's taken my mobile phone. Now. He comes to me and says, oh, you have stolen my mobile phone. And will you not feel ashamed? Will I not feel ashamed? Which person is there who will not be ashamed? That, oh, he's realized I've stolen. And in that shame, he becomes so regretful. He says, my friend, I'm sorry. Forgive me, I made a big mistake. Doesn't a person say this? So, if we are so ashamed in front of the third party who's seen us steal his items and possessions. So with Allah, our Rabb, who we have to go to, he's our Khaliq, he's our Creator, he's our Malik, he's our Qadir. So when a person disobeys Allah, will he not feel ashamed? 
Will he not feel badly ashamed when he meets Allah, when he knows Allah knows? Such, uh, uh, Allah Ta'ala, the, Allah is the greatest, Allah our Lord, the Creator, the Master. Will we not feel ashamed if we have sinned? Uh, must be a hard-hearted person, like a rock-hearted person. For example, I sin in front of a person, or I steal, or do something against a person that's wrong, and I'm ashamed. Then will I not be feel ashamed when Allah Ta'ala knows about my sins? Automatically I should feel ashamed. Allah did not order this to me, and I did this. Allah said, don't do this. And I made a mistake, I erred, Allah my Rabb is watching me, looking at me. How sad, how bad. And this Allah Ta'ala likes the feeling of regret, acceptance. Allah Ta'ala doesn't like um, Fir'auniyat and stubbornness and haughtiness and rejection. Just to have this feeling that Allah is watching me, He's seeing me, I've disobeyed, I've sinned, and how sad, how shameful a person is doing a sin. And while he's sinning, another person sees him sin. How shameful he'll feel. Though he's seen me sinning. Oh, I feel so bad. Well, he won't feel like going in front of that person because he's got the feeling of shame. Such a pious person and I sinned in front of this person. I feel ashamed. So, in front of Allah, Rabbul Alameen, we've sinned. Will we not feel bad and shame? Of course we will. So the first thing is regret Allah. I've made a big mistake. And I did a wrong action. The nafs made me do this. We should feel this. Regret and remorse. After that, the second is the first thing. When a person sins, Principle number one, you should feel regret. And number two, straight away to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't delay, straight away, immediately. Accept the sin in the court of Allah. That Allah, I've made this mistake, I've erred, I've made a mistake, an error, I've sinned. I accept my mistake, Allah, I accept uh, that I've got these deficiencies or I've made a sin and I accept my sin. And the third principle after sinning or making a mistake, very important. Yes, is make a complete intention, not with one millimeter, one percentage of deficiency. No, that for example, you think, no, it's all right, I'm not going to leave this. No, 100% make an intention with confidence that inshallah, Allah, I will not repeat this sin, forgive me. And this is how strong should be our intention, because we're making a contract with Allah. Yes, Allah Ta'ala releases, if this happens, Allah Ta'ala said already that if this happens, then at that time you'll ask for forgiveness. I'll forgive you again. I'll forgive you again. If you if you repeat the mistake, I'll forgive you again. Allah says, so the the, the criminal who's committed the sin says, Allah, I will not commit the sin again. I've made a mistake. What will I do now? And don't be afraid that oh, I might go back to the sin. Is the door open? If I do again, if I sin again, what will happen? I'm upset. No, the the question doesn't arise. That I will think of sin again. So those three principles that we just discussed should happen straight away after sinning. It shouldn't take a second. I've sinned. I bow my head. I sit in the car. I'm on the road, on the pavement. Don't wait. I'll go to the masjid first, to the mosque, pray to Rakan Nafal. No, there's no guarantee of death. No guarantee when will I die. So easy a method. No wudu needed. Nothing. Allah is near to us all the time. Allah is very close to us. Allah sees our sins. And He sees us asking for forgiveness. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, we don't need to get any intermediary influence, phoning someone for help, or a wakil, or a solicitor, or a lawyer. No need, you are your own lawyer. I am my own solicitor. And we have permission all the time. Whenever we want, we can go and knock on the door of the supreme judge of all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what a judge. Allah's got the whole universe in control. And even the flies are afraid of Allah, the mosquitoes are afraid of Allah, the fish are afraid of Allah, the leaves are afraid of Allah. The whole universe, it shakes. It is an awe of Allah. And Allah says, I give you ijaz, a human being. That I give you permission. I'm so close to you whenever you want. Day, night, morning, at any time, you have no restriction. Come and knock on my door, I will respond to you, Allah says. So, but even then, we prefer, I'd rather go to hellfire, we say. How sad. What a pathetic mentality. Negative. Negative. So, Allah Ta'ala says that what occurs after that? Allah Ta'ala says that Allah has taken the a benefit to the extreme in this verse. Allah says, you are just running after forgiveness, forgiveness. That's not where the, the road ends. Allah says, see forgiveness. You ask for forgiveness. I will forgive. And Allah says, I'll tell you the next scene. Say, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala says, your link is with that Nabi who is my mahboob. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is my beloved. He is my beloved. My, and he's the greatest. And you are his ummati. And what is it that I will not give to you? Allah says, fa'ulaika yubadilullah. Sayyatul Hassan. Look at this point. What a great statement. Allah says, 
That it's not just this that I will forgive your sins, Allah Ta'ala says. It's not just this, it doesn't stop there. The back doesn't stop there, Allah says, I'm Rahim. And what is the attribute of Rahim? Subhanallah. What's the reward of Allah's Rahma, Allah's mercy? Allah says, you've come to me. And you came with a bundle of sins. You gathered so many sins. You amassed them after 80 years. You came to me after 70 years. You came to me. And you came because you had an issue. And you got a shock. And you came to me. You were ill. You thought, oh, I'm going to die now. I'm going to die soon. Okay, let's go to Allah. Let's go to somebody to do dua for me. Even at that time, Allah says, when you come to me, that my verse will, will be a witness and testify to the promise I gave in the Quran that I will treat you in the same way. So first thing is ghafoor. Eighty years of sin are a mask, you bring them to me. You say, Allah, forgive me. Then Allah Ta'ala says, Ghafoor, I promised all of your sins wiped away, sins eliminated. Eighty-year-old person, he's tired of sinning now, now he's going to paradise. Paradise. Allah says, this is my shan, my glory. And look at my next glory, oh old man. Old woman, look at my shan, my glory. Allah says, look what I do, I'm ghafoor. Fa'ula'ika, Allah says. What a great statement. Allah's rahmah, mercy. What is the rahmah? That whatever sins you bring to me, sayyatun. Allah Ta'ala says, what will I do? Tabadlum hasanat. That when you bring sins to me, when you brought sins to me, you were showing a live earth and make a mistake. You were scared and afraid of your sins. Allah says, what will I do with you, with those sins today? All of your sins forgiven. And however many sins you brought to me, every single one is transformed into a good deed. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So those sins that were taking you into Jahannam, they are now elevating your status in paradise. Imagine those deeds that were taking us, dragging us to hellfire. They're not taking us to Jahannam. Rather, they are increasing our darajat in Jannah. So there's a beautiful point from this verse and a beautiful point that arises that comes to my mind. If you give me permission, I'll present it to you as a beneficial factor. فَأُولَٰئِكَ Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an. And these are the people, Allah Ta'ala says, that these are those people, فَأُولَٰئِكَ Which people? With whom, Allah Ta'ala says, that they commit a sin and they come to me. Allah says that they sin, they make a mistake, then I forgive their sins. Then after that, I t- change their sins into good deeds. Fa'ulaika. What does this mean here? The fa'ulaika. Subhanallah. Look here. I will tell you a hadith first. Then you'll understand fa'ulaika. What is the meaning that is derived? What is Allah Ta'ala saying? Who are the people? Is Allah Ta'ala addressing us? Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. It looks like this. That Allah Ta'ala is addressing us today. That this is the qawm. The nation Allah Ta'ala said that I'm speaking about. So here everyone sat here, all sinful people. There's a champion here. Yes, I know every one of these brothers sitting here. Who's a wali? Who is what? Allah Ta'ala knows all of us, isn't it? They've come here. They've sat down. So is it Allah Ta'ala is addressing us? Is it us who is Allah Ta'ala addressing us? Anas radiyallahu anhu stated, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mamin, qawmin, yishtamiyu. مَا مِنْ قَوْمٍ يَشْتَمِيُوا يَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ Say Subhanallah That at that time when a nation, a group of people, such people, such individuals who are sat in a masjid in Bolton after Maghrib, they left their home, their work, their dunya, their issues, their sadness, their problems, their work. Hadith is telling us that قَوْم You, me, us from far and near, near and far قَوْم يَشْتَمِيُوا They come, they gather, they get seated Together, what for? Yadkurullah for the sake of dhikr of Allah. For as remembers, then what happens? Manadam fi sama from the heavens, from the skies, an angel is there. An angel is there for, for every deed, for every task. There's a unique angel, and there's an angel that has been invited for me and you, for a sign for me and you that when we were sinners, and now Allah Taala gives us His mercy due to one action. Fa'ulaika. So tell me who are these people? You can decide yourself. That who is Allah Taala mentioning, addressing in this uh, hadith? There's a gathering. People come together. They sit, and Allah says, "I have given a task to an angel for one purpose." And Munadam Ismai from the heavens, he calls out, Nada, announcement of the whole universe, every square millimeter, centimeter, meter, in the oceans, depth of oceans, fish and creatures and animals, they can hear the call of that angel. SubhanAllah, except for the human being. 
That's the call. That's the announcement of that angel. That's the power Allah has given to it. The whole universe, far and wide, his call vibrates, reverberates. Why? Munadim, because he is announcing on behalf of Allah. Imagine the power of this angel. What's he announcing? Qawmun maqfurun. Qawmun maqfurun lakum. Badaltu sayyatu hasana. The O Qawm, O people who are gathered for the dhikr of Allah, there's an announcement from Allah already been made. Allah Ta'ala has not just forgiven you, rather your sins have been changed into good deeds. Subhanallah, fa'ulaika. So these are those people. Fa'ulaika yubadullahu. So what we realize is the dhikr of Allah, those who do the dhikr of Allah, they have a high maqam, massive maqam. This is my friends, the crux of the matter. That qawm that do the dhikr of Allah, the Quran testifies, Allah Ta'ala says, I don't just forgive their sins, rather I change their sins into good deeds. In the morning do dhikr, evening, daytime, evening, walking, sleeping, talking individually in a gathering do dhikr. Allah's law principle has been made. The awdhakireen, when you remember me, I love you so much, you remember me, subhanallah. You remember me. And this amal is so beloved to Allah, so preferable to Allah. Allah Ta'ala doesn't just forgive, rather Allah Ta'ala turns and changes the sins into good deeds. So my brothers, we are desperately in need of being saved from Jahannam today, the generation we're in. It is very bad, very dark, very negative that to be saved from the sins is a big mujahid, a big effort. Very big effort to save ourselves from the sins. A person does commit the sins. He does commit the sins. So let's make a principle. What is that principle? That Alhamdulillah, never leave the dhikr of Allah. Never leave the dhikr of Allah. Allah Ta'ala's dhikr will automatically forgive you. This is the quality, the, the, the speciality of the dhikr of Allah. Dhikr is such a machine, it will allow you to get forgiveness from Allah. And all the sins we've committed, for example, we're sat here, and the sins of the whole day from morning till now that we've committed. How many we must have committed? I speak about myself, you are pious, I seek forgiveness, you are pious brothers. But in other words, how many sins have I committed from morning till now? There must be a mountain of sins and angels are tired of writing this sin, this sin, that sin. Knowingly, unknowingly, how many things I've said from my tongue, show off, pride, haughtiness. It doesn't matter, I don't know, I mean, shaitan, he plays all sorts of games with us to commit sins. And we shouldn't just run off what people say, he's pious, he prays salah in the masjid, he is good, he does this. Don't believe what people say. Now put yourself in front of the mirror and ask yourself, what am I really about? Because people speak nonsense. They are like shaitans who praise the human being and the human being gets a big head. So say, sorry, I'm not like this. Please don't speak to me about me like this, that I'm pious. I am nothing. I am minor and I am a sinner. Until today, I haven't seen in the great majalis gatherings where I had tawfiq to attend. In no gathering of the wali of Allah, I've never seen that in this way he's sitting, that I'm the best and everyone's worse than me. I've never seen a true sheikh in that manner. I tell you the truth. Reality and the reason is that there's something that changes the person for the better. Not for a second. Never did they have, never should we have an iota of an intention that I think I'm better than others. In any case, in any subject, doesn't matter if I'm an alim, doesn't matter if I'm a high ranked muhaddith, if a normal person without knowledge comes, I should say I am worse than you, I have no ilm. I swear by Allah, this is how our mindset should be. The brother, I don't have ilm of this, that you know better than me. Subhanallah. So here, a person becomes fana. When a person wants to prepare for their after, you can become like this and I can become like this. That if we can be people strongly attached to the world, can there be anyone better than, uh, worse than us? For example, we are so attached to the world and money, we have grief when we lose out financially, selling, buying, taking, giving. This is our life and these are artificial things. So the real thing here is that we should become how? That we assign ourselves to Allah. And this is fitrah. This, this is not hard to become like this. That we should lower ourselves and humble ourselves. We shouldn't think we're better than others. Because when there's a person like this who considers himself as a sinner, then he will always stay in istighfar and his sins will uh, continue. And uh, for example, he asks for Allah for istighfar, then his sins will be forgiven. But a person who doesn't even want to atone for his sins, oh, I ain't got time to go to masjid or dhikr gathering. And if he realizes, for example, I never saw my Hazrat Sahib 50 years yeah, he was 18, 1900. 
that 50 years in his company, I never saw from uh, Safar, Medina, Makkah, journey home, Hajj, Shajar, I never saw where Hazrat Sheikh left a gathering of dhikr. He said, why should I leave the gathering of dhikr? Through this, my sins are forgiven. That, for example, I've got a chance, I am a big sinner. Allah has given me opportunity that the gathering of dhikr is taking place. I should sit down in the gathering. What a difference between the two individuals whose mindset changes and what do they become. Because they get fikr akhir Fikr of the hereafter. And they're really afraid of Jahannam. They're really afraid of Allah. How can I go into fire, the fire of Jahannam? I cannot understand this. I can't. I don't want to. So how do we stave off that possibility? That we, we are hard-hearted, rocky-hearted. We know that there's such a great hadith about the gathering of dhikr. Tell me if you announce a thousand times, people will not listen. They'll start um, dissecting and criticizing. They'll make an excuse. They'll say they need to do this dhikr. They'll look at Allah's rahmah. If you sit with a niyyah in that gathering, that Allah, I've come here to wash away my sins and I've come to listen to your angel who's calling out, made an announcement, after which you've said that you will change the sins into good deeds. I am in desperately need that I've just made an intention. Allah, I've come to your dhikr gathering. Please be merciful on me. And here's a person sat there. He was sat on the chair some time ago. And it was Thursday night, alhamdulillah. He was sat here, right here. It was a Thursday night some weeks ago. And he heard these words. And we are mad and we speak about this. Aren't we people say we're crazy. We don't talk about anything else. He went home. After the gathering one half years, two hours. And he passed away. He went to Allah. Back to Allah. Tell me what a mouth, what a death. Great when I saw his face. Time and time again I say this. Wallah billah. I say by Allah. In my life I've not seen such a beautiful face. He hadn't even been given the ghusl yet. And uh, Mangera. He took me there by force. And I was shocked, amazed there. I said, this is that brother. I knew him very well. And time and time again I kept glancing at his face. I want to see it again. I want to see his face again. So... He had sakina, he had peace on his face. Why? Because he departed from this world with good news. Is this a lie? What we've discussed is the Quran line. Allah says that all of you, if you come to me, I will transform and translate and change your sins into good deeds. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said, Who? Those people who make a gathering for the dhikr of Allah. For those people, Allah says, I've prepared angels. And look at Fir'aun and Nimrud. And those people, they, they say, oh no, 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 we don't need to do any good deeds, we don't need to do the gathering, this is a small gathering. Is this a small gathering that we're sat in here? Never think like this. Never deprioritize this, Allah has given us health. Hazrat bin Abbas radiallahu anhu said that the first question that me and you will be grabbed by the next, next and asked, the first na'm of Allah, the first gift of Allah, favor of Allah that will be asked about, do you know what it is? Hazrat ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu stated this hadith, what a great status he had. And the first ni'mah, the first gift of Allah that He's given to us that will ask us about to account for is Allah will say, I gave you health. Did you not avail those opportunities that I gave to you that would have given you forgiveness? Say subhanallah. So dhikr halakat, gatherings of dhikr, we have these hadith in which Allah has given a guarantee. Sit, forgiveness, sit, forgiveness. Allah says, I gave you health. Oh animals, I gave you health for this reason. What, to make money? I gave you health for what reason? To fill your treasure chest? Tills, to make houses, to look at your stomachs, and to look at lust and passion and do sins. Is this why I gave you health, Allah says? So that you, I said, I gave you, Allah says, I gave you health. Did I, did I give you health? So you can become famous in the world and be a bandit and a criminal and you fight with people and quarrel with people? Is this why I gave you health, Allah, Allah says? Allah says, I gave you health for this reason, that on every few footsteps go to the masjid in the house of Allah, there's a gathering. And can any human being dare to do my dhikr, Allah says? Allah says, I gave you the power, ability and fadl and karam that I allow you to come to my home and sit in the gathering to do my dhikr. Go, run, run, run. Allah Ta'ala says, run and, and, and sprint towards the gatherings of dhikr. But who hears this call? If nobody hears the call of the angel, then who will listen to Allah's call? No, I don't have time. I've got to do another action. I've got to do X, Y, Z. I'm busy at this time. I'm forced not to come. This is not fard, is it? I prayed salah. It's too hard. I've done tilawat of the Quran. I've done this and that. I don't need to do anything else. Astaghfirullah. My friends, these moments will be uh, testify. Don't look at the sins. Don't look at the sins. Look at the power of Allah's rahmah. This is rahmah, isn't it? And this is the name of Rahmah. What else can, the, can Rahmah be? Tell me. That on every few footsteps we have maqan, on our homes we have uh, places, and Allah Ta'ala allows us to sit and to remember Him and to elevate His name and to do His dhikr. 
the whole gap between the heavens and the earth is filled up and this is the night of Juma and the sins are being removed Shaban night of Juma your destiny is being transformed and today after this forgiveness and after this tawbah we should promise Allah Ramadan is about to come I won't leave my salah with takbir I won't leave the faraid I won't leave compulsory actions I won't go towards sin I won't do listen to music and singing and until Ramadan Allah says uh, the individual says Allah I do tawbah I repent and inshallah after some weeks he will emanate from that blessed month after a few weeks, we'll enter into the ocean of Rahma. We will dive into it. What a great chance. Can we get Tawbah like this anywhere else, anytime? Do we promise, my brothers? After today, do Tawbah. Live with Tawbah. Your sins have been forgiven. If you have yaqeen in the words of the Quran and the deed, then our sins have been wiped, cleaned. Shahada has been written. Angels have recorded that these people are forgiven. There will be no sin on our bodies. Sayyidul Amal, Allah Ta'ala says that I have wiped away your sins. So a new lease of life we should take from here. We are grateful to Allah, my Mawla, you made this masjid. Grateful to Allah that you have allowed us to come to your home. Allah, I'm grateful to you that you allowed me to do the work of the masjid. Allah, I'm grateful to you that you've allowed me to partake in the making of your home. And I am grateful to you for sitting in your dhikr. So this is the maqam of shukr. Uh, this could not have been a masjid. Maybe, maybe we wouldn't have sat down. Uh, poor, the poor souls before us have left and go to the masjid. They've not gone empty-handed. The same thawab will go to all those people who with a good intention, they placed down the foundations of this masjid. They gave money and who did planning that there should be a masjid there. Today in the graves, the graves are alive. Because they had good niya, good intention. So two things we need to do. I just say, it's your choice. There's no forcing here. Number one, that because Shaban is progressing, is giving us a lot, is giving us the preparation of Ramadan after today's Tawbah. Who knows, will we get life or not? As I said, the brother was sitting on the chair. In the morning, he was no more. And the first, we should do Tawbah today with this Niya. That until Ramadan, I will control myself. The rest is your choice, Allah. Then we've got another opportunity. Then I'll sit in the Majid of Dikr again. Then the opportunity will come. Then I'll ask for forgiveness again. So don't leave Salah, my brothers. Don't leave prayer five times Salah in congregation. And the next point is that be extremely cautious and stay away from sin. Music, singing, banging, this and that. And our nafs say, no, I've done tawbah until Ramadan and during Ramadan I won't do this. And in those people's homes where there are these wasteful activities, put a veil, a curtain, cloth over these things for six, seven weeks for the sake of Allah. This is very valuable moment that's about to come up. Put the veil over there. Six, seven weeks, we're not even going to touch this. Let it stay there the way it is and put the veil over it. Put the veil over it. Rather, with it, what should we do? On top of that, Alhamdulillah, do another great action. In comparison to that, put out, uh, for example, uh, a platform and put a rail and two Qurans in English and Urdu. Uh, Arabic and there and subhanallah and put this as a barrier between you and shaitan that not this this will go whenever I feel like listening to something bad this program watching evil then I will sit down and I will start reciting the Quran subhanallah so have a bit of courage determination of Allah so merciful to us he's forgiven us then we need to try as well isn't it and the next point the next point is that wherever dhikr of Allah you see, notice, hear about, this is a very simple bargain, simple transaction. I've just told you one direction of dhikr, and you don't know what's the reward. So whenever you see there's a gathering of dhikr, just stay silent, close your eyes and sit in the gathering. Don't be lazy. It's in the morning here and in the evening. If it's not in the evening here, then it's in some other masjid in the town. Drive and you will reach them. Until Ramadan, do this inshallah. And then you'll have such a great Ramadan that will pass subhanallah. Such a great Ramadan that you'll think, that how did my month of Ramadan pass? So that's it, two actions. Be regular in salah and adhere to the gatherings of dhikr. Doesn't matter what come may, say I'm going to sit down, my sins are being forgiven. Alhamdulillah, when the sins are purified, then his rank elevates with the fadl of Allah. And then Allah Ta'ala's rewards descend onto that person for their rafta. And then do du'as to Allah, whatever you want from Allah. Allah says, I listen to you and I'll give to you. Will we do this my friends? Insha'Allah.